Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwe. Today's message coming from uh, St. Moses the Black, Abba Moses, St. Moses the Ethiopian. It's going to be a tough one. It, 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 is, it is a tough one. As I was thinking about what it was that he said and how the story went and what it, it meant and how, uh, you know, how I'm supposed to apply it, how I'm supposed to, 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 to find it, to, to allow it to seep its way into my life. I, I was way... Anyway, let me tell you the story. One day, Moses was called to sit in judgment of another, of another brother, of another monk. The monk had had erred. The monk had sinned. The monk had done something wrong. This was indisputable. That was, that was not being questioned. What they, were, they were bringing the brothers together. Uh, they were bringing the brothers together to decide what this monk's penance would be. How this monk would, would pay for their particular crime, for their particular mistake. Now Moses, he's been, at this point, he's getting a little bit of a reputation. He's, he's, being, he's being seen more and more often as, as a person of wisdom and as a person of integrity and, and, a, and a, a genuine follower of Jesus Christ. And so, of course, he's one of the ones they call for, but he don't go. He doesn't want to go. He won't go. They wait for him, but he doesn't come. And so they, they send for him again and say, you have to come. It's part of your job. So the story goes that Moses... Filled up, a, uh, filled up a bucket full of water, put it on his shoulders. And there was a hole in the bucket. And as Moses walked from where he was to where they were sitting with this, with this mistaken brother, uh, and, and they were going to determine his penance, water ran out of the bucket onto the ground behind Moses, when he got there, the bucket was empty. The other brothers, they asked him, why are you carrying an empty bucket? He said, well, my sins, like the water, have run out behind me. They're back there. But I'm now being asked to stand in judgment of another brother. Remember, Moses knows who he was. He knows where he comes from. He remembers being a criminal. He remembers being a brutal man. He still fights with those urges. He still desires that adventure. He still probably has, has trouble controlling his temper. He's, he's still the bandit in some ways. He knows that that person will always be a part of him. But he also knows he doesn't have to give in to who, who he used to be. Most importantly, he knows the forgiveness he's received in this relationship he's built with Jesus Christ. He knows that whatever it is he's done, he knows that everything he's done, and this guy's done some nasty stuff. This guy's done some, some pirate-like stuff. But all of it, all of it's washed away in the eyes of the Lord. That stuff is as far as from the east is from the west. Not only is he forgiven, but the price has been paid. The penance has been made. The other brothers, when they hear Moses' story about the bucket, they get it. They get it immediately. And they forgive the brother who had, who had sinned, who had broken their law. They forgive him and they go about their lives together. 
this story isn't really about judgment. It's not about judging a person as, as bad. You know, this, this story isn't a, a, a story where these people all get together and they decide whether or not somebody has done the right thing or the wrong thing, the good thing or the bad thing. No. And Moses doesn't argue that. Right? He doesn't argue this person didn't do a bad thing. Everybody in that room, including the brother who is being tried, they all know this guy was wrong. This guy did a bad thing. What Moses' story is about is, is the compassion that the, the people of the monastery, the brothers in the monastery were called to show this wayward brother the compassion that, that Jesus shows all of us through the forgiveness of our sins, the compassion that Jesus calls each of us to show others. It's a difficult lesson. It's a really stinking difficult lesson, right? It's, we, there's a part of us, we want people to pay for their mistakes because if they don't pay for their mistakes, how are they going to learn? What is their... What, what, what is the catalyst for their future growth? Why would they ever choose not to make this same decision again? What's stopping them from doing this thing over and over and over and over and over again? Surely if there's some sort of punishment, if there's some sort of penance, if there's some sort of consequence for their action, that is what will stop them from doing it again. At least that's what our society, I think, sees as the most comfortable way forward when a person has made a mistake, when a person has made the wrong choice, when a person has committed a crime, when a person has done something to harm others. There's the premise, a very, very prevalent premise, a widely accepted understanding that they must pay the price and it's through that punishment that they will be reformed. Moses calls us here to a very lofty goal. He calls us to live according to an incredibly lofty standard. This isn't something that, this isn't something that I can do like that. It's not something that I can just simply say, okay, that's it. I'm going to be compassionate and I'm going to be merciful and I'm going to be forgiving exactly like Jesus forgives me and exactly as Moses calls his brethren to forgive that man. That's what I'm going to do right now today. It's the goal. It's the gold standard we should reach for. As I thought about this lesson, as I thought about the lesson that Moses teaches his brethren, I thought, well, surely he doesn't mean in this situation. Surely he doesn't mean in that situation. Obviously, the, the, the situation that Moses found himself in that day was that the, the other brother, the, 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 the erring brother, the sinful brother simply ate, I don't know, one too many desserts that night. It couldn't have been anything serious. I looked for reasons to reject this teaching. I looked for, for reasons to reject what Moses was offering. And yet what Moses offers here is at the core of the gospel. What Moses offers the brethren, what Moses offers us is is one of the pillars of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness and mercy. No matter how often someone sins against us, forgiveness and mercy. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as we give praise and glory to God, that our sins are all behind us. As we move forward, I pray we will grow. That we will grow to be able to offer that same grace and mercy to those we encounter, to those, even to those people who, even to those people who have harmed us. Amen. Numoltis.